Today we're going to look at how to use Audacity to add audio to flashcards. And specifically it's about how to take what's usually quite a large audio file and divide it into individual files so that you can add an individual audio file to the relevant flashcard when you're making a deck of phrases in the language you're learning. So just before we get into the details of how to do that, just a few quick notes on the sources you could use to get audio files in the first place. So the cheapest and one of the most convenient ways is to use Anki uh, by going to the community decks and seeing if anyone has posted a free deck on there in the language you're learning. You won't always be able to find what you're looking for. Uh, for example, they may not have audio um, or they may not quite be in the sort of style or with the contents you're after, but it's definitely worth checking just in case, as it can save time and money. When that's not possible, you've got various other options, some of which can be free or very cost effective, and others which can require paying for. In terms of paid resources, you can often find resources where someone has created, say, a PDF of hundreds or a few thousand of the most common phrases in a language or some common phrases in a language and depending on maybe how much it costs or how much effort that person's decided to put into the resource you can find that they have accompanying audio files for the phrases and the most useful form of this is where they've made a deck themselves for you to use when you purchase the resource itself and that's obviously just ready to go and you can use that straight away. But most often, uh, that won't be the case, unfortunately. And when that's the case, uh, sometimes you'll find that they provide one big audio file, in which case the tutorial we're about to get into will be useful so you can break it down and attach individual files to each flashcard. And one of the other most common options is that you can record audio, basically. For example, there's loads of YouTube videos out there where people provide lots of common phrases in a language, intermediate phrases, advanced phrases, all sorts. As long as it's for personal use, you could always record that audio uh, yourself and make an audio file that way. And then you can take this larger audio file and again, using the tutorial we're about to go into, divide it into individual files to add to the flashcards you're making. Audacity is a free-to-use software that's open source and can be used on a wide range of platforms. You can find the link to download it in the description below and in the corresponding article on the How to Learn Languages website. To record audio with Audacity, you just set the microphone you want and the speakers, depending on what's suitable for you at the time, and then you just press record and let whatever you're wanting to record play in the background and Audacity will take it in and when you're ready just press stop up here and then you've got that audio file and then once you've got that you can follow the tutorial we're about to go into where we'll look at how to break it down into individual audio files. So we're going to use this file here as an example and the link to this resource will be in the description below and in the article. It's a resource for Russian, but what we're about to cover in the tutorial applies to any audio file for any language you're learning. So when you open the file in Audacity, and to do that just right click on the file and do open with Audacity, and once it opens it's likely that the whole audio file will be condensed into the screen, which is why it looks very thick. And because there's 400 phrases covered in this resource, it's almost an hour and a half long. So although this tutorial is going to show you how to speed up the process, it does of course take a little bit of time, but it can help save money from buying more expensive resources where it's already done for you. And the steps in this tutorial should make it a process that doesn't take too long, relatively speaking. It makes it feasible anyway. So to start with, you want to zoom in so we can see the audio file in the detail we're going to need to create individual audio files. So to do that, just with your two fingers on the trackpad, zoom in. But you can also go on the View tab 
at the top of the screen, select zoom and zoom in that way, but just for the sake of uh, brevity here, we'll zoom in uh, just quickly using fingers on the trackpad. And we just need to zoom in until we get to this point where you can see each kind of unit of sound in its own form. So basically each of these things here is one phrase. Now if we go to the start of the audio file, we just need to work out how often the person who's created the resource says a new phrase basically. So for example, this bit here at the start is the introduction or introduction music. They then say the first phrase here and I'll just play that now. Good morning. Доброе утро. Доброе утро. Доброе утро. Good afternoon. So we can see there the format they're going with is they say the phrase in English and then they repeat the phrase in Russian three times. Now why that's useful to check at the start is it means that when we're creating the individual files, we can quickly skip through all of these blobs of sound uh, on the audio file and create separate files as we go based on that interval we've just worked out. So now that we've zoomed in and can see each part of the audio file, we need to know how to split each part of the audio file we want to turn into individual files. So to do this, if you go to uh, Preferences, and then there's some useful shortcuts uh, we can use to do this. Now the first one we're going to need is for Split. So if you search Split up here, you can then see the Split option here. And it's just simply the R key, or whichever preference you have, but just one key is all you need. And then when we go back to the file now, because we've worked out how often we're going to need to uh, split uh, a blob of sound, for want of a better turn of phrase, we can just go through the file with the R key, separating each bit we need. So we've worked out that it's the second one of each set we need. So we press R here and then R again. And that isolates this unit of sound here. So that first Russian phrase. So this one here is the English phrase. The first Russian phrase, it's then repeated here and then again here. And then we're on to the next English phrase here. And then that brings us here to the second Russian phrase we're gonna need. So basically, as we go along, we've worked out that from each one, there's one, two, three blobs before we then get to the one we need. And we can just keep doing that through the audio file. So one, two, three, four here. And we can just keep scrolling along and doing that like so. Now, it may seem a bit mundane, a bit tedious, but if you put maybe a podcast on you want to listen to in the background or some music to relax, it can pass the time okay. And in the end, it will be very useful if you are wanting to use flashcards. Just having that audio on there is a great reference when you're wanting to check pronunciation, especially during the early stages of when you're learning a language. Once you've done that for every individual file you want to make from the audio file, the next thing we need to do is export the individual audio files. So to do this, we can use some shortcuts again. If you go to Preferences, and then you can search uh, for the shortcuts you need. So if you search for Label, and Add Label at Selection, and I've tried putting various ones in and the most common one it seems to come up with when I try to put certain combinations in is Command B. Just go with whichever keyboard shortcuts are most useful for you in terms of saving time. And you can just press set there. Another one you can use is next clip. And so here it's got the option key and the full stop to do that. You don't have to use the next clip feature, you can just keep selecting the clips and pressing B. But I'll just show you how that's going to work now. 
so we go to the first one here you can select it manually like I've just done just by clicking on the top there and then command B and it creates a label at the bottom there now you can either then press the shortcut you've got for next clip such as option full stop and then option full stop again to get to the next individual file we've centered on and you can press command B again to generate a label personally I find it a little bit quicker just to select it like this or certainly more convenient in terms of where the hands are on the keyboard but I'm sure you can figure out a keyboard shortcut combination which is convenient for you where you can just keep using the keys so just go with whichever you prefer and you just keep going along and pressing command B on each individual file you need to create the label for so that again does take a bit of time but it's the quickest way I've come across for doing it and again if you just pop a podcast on in the background or some music the time can pass relatively quickly and it's going to be useful for the flashcards you're making so it should hopefully be worth it in the end you should have it looking a bit like this where each individual segment of the audio file you've made should have a label underneath so I'll just scroll along just to give you a sense of how it would look. So notice how we're not needing to put labels underneath the middle parts. So where there's these three blobs in a row, we don't need that stuff. It's just labels for the individual files we want to uh, take away from this audio file. So as you can see, once you're done, you'll have a whole row of labels like this going all the way to the end of the audio file or to as far as you want to create individual files for. Now to export these, we go to File, Export, and Export Multiple. Now when you get here, you just pick the folder you want to save it in. Select what type of sound file. I just go with MP3, but just go with whichever is suitable for you. And then here, it's quite a useful feature they've got, numbering after file name prefix. So you can change the file name here if you want. I've just kept the one that's come with the resources, it sums it up fine. And this numbering option after the file name prefix means that each label we've created will be numbered in order. And that's gonna be really useful when you create the flashcards as it'll say one, two, three, four, and it'll correspond to the PDF that comes with the resource or just the order you're creating the flashcards in. So it makes it much easier to then drag and drop the individual audio files onto the flashcard you're making. So you just click export and it'll save it into the folder you selected up here. So once you've exported it, you'll end up with all the individual files in the folder you selected when you exported. So here you can see the original file there, and I've created a new folder there to contain all the individual files. So when you drop it down, it's gonna have them all listed, and crucially, it's gonna have one, two, three, four, all numbered, so that you can drag and drop them onto Anki, or whatever flashcard software you're using, in an order that makes sense in line with the PDF you're using, or just the order you're creating them in yourself. So just to quickly show how to do that, got Anki open here as an example you just click add and now on the front of the card we'll want the English phrase so in this case I'm going to go to the PDF that was provided by Russian level one the YouTube channel providing the resource but it could be a list you've made yourself based on some YouTube videos you've watched uh, or something like that so I go to the PDF copy the English phrase back to Anki and then on the back, we're going to want the Russian phrase. You can add some more information, such as this stuff here, the Russian with stress accents, transliteration, or similar bits of information for the language you're learning. For the sake of this example, I'll just keep it simple with the English and the Russian translation. Now in this bit here on the back of the card, you go to Finder, or the equivalent, and drag and drop the individual file number one. And that's just that short, succinct 
audio file of that phrase there for reference on that flashcard. So you then just click add and it's ready to make a new one. So just to complete the example, do it again, copy and paste phrase number two. Get the Russian translation. And then the audio file and just drag it and drop that in here. Press add and you can just keep doing that for as long as you need to depending on how many phrases you're looking to make flashcards for. Now of course it's not a process which can be done in a matter of minutes necessarily if you're wanting to do hundreds or even thousands of phrases over a period of time but this does speed up the process significantly and having audio files on flashcards for reference is really helpful when you're starting to learn a language. It maybe won't be worth your time later on when you're familiar with standard pronunciation and are comfortable with it, but certainly in the early stages it's well worth your time if you're wanting to use flashcards. Again, you don't have to use flashcards, but if you're wanting to, I'd definitely recommend doing this in the early stages. And if you record the audio yourself from a video online for personal use, then you can do it for free as well if you need to. If you'd like to learn more about how to use Audacity, there's lots of great YouTube channels out there and I'll link one of these in the description below and in the corresponding article on the How to Learn Languages website. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you found it helpful and see you next time.